What would you do to ensure a world safe from nuclear threats? This is the question that sparked the Iran nuclear deal. A deal that has stirred up a whirlwind of debate, controversy, and in some circles, outright hostility. A fascinating mix of global diplomacy, economic sanctions, and regional stability, the Iran nuclear deal is a complex topic that demands our attention. Imagine a chessboard, with each move carefully calculated, each piece holding significance. That's the world of international diplomacy. The Iran nuclear deal is one such move on this grand chessboard. It's a move that has caused ripples across the globe, stirring up questions about its effectiveness, its fairness, and its impact on the balance of power in the Middle East. The deal has sparked a global conversation about nuclear proliferation, regional stability, and the role of sanctions in international diplomacy. It's a conversation that's far from over. So let's take a step back and see how this all began. To understand the present, we must visit the past. The Iran nuclear deal did not happen in a vacuum. The story of Iran's nuclear program begins in the mid-20th century. It was the 1950s, and the United States and Iran were allies. As part of the Atoms for Peace program, the US helped Iran build its first nuclear reactor. This was a time when Iran's nuclear ambitions were viewed positively, seen as a symbol of progress and modernization. However, the winds of change were blowing. The 1979 Islamic Revolution transformed the landscape. The once friendly US-Iran relationship took a nosedive. The new regime in Iran was suspicious of the West and its intentions, leading to a significant shift in Iran's nuclear aspirations. From the 1980s through the 1990s, Iran's nuclear program grew, albeit covertly. The West grew wary, suspecting Iran of developing nuclear weapons under the guise of peaceful energy production. Tensions escalated, culminating in Iran's withdrawal from the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 2005. This move sent shockwaves around the globe. In response, the international community, led by the United States and its European allies, clamped down hard. Economic sanctions were imposed on Iran, crippling its economy. Yet, Iran remained defiant, continuing its nuclear program unabated. By 2010, Iran was enriching uranium to levels that alarmed the world. The West feared Iran was inching closer to producing a nuclear weapon. Despite Iran's insistence that its nuclear program was purely for peaceful purposes, the world remained skeptical, the stakes were high, and the world was watching. The situation ratcheted up another notch when in 2012, Iran announced it had produced its first nuclear fuel rod. This was a significant technological achievement, bringing Iran one step closer to the capacity to produce nuclear weapons. Fast forward to 2015 and the world is on the edge. Iran's nuclear program is a ticking time bomb. Enter the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or what we commonly know as the Iran Nuclear Deal. This was no ordinary agreement. It was the outcome of years of diplomatic efforts involving the United Nations Security Council's five permanent members, the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Russia and China plus Germany, collectively known as the P5 plus 1. The crux of the deal was simple, yet complex. Iran agreed to limit its nuclear program in return for the lifting of economic sanctions that had been crippling its economy for years. It was a groundbreaking move, aimed at ensuring Iran's nuclear pursuits were purely peaceful. But let's dig a little deeper. Under the terms of the agreement, Iran committed to reducing its stockpile of enriched uranium by 98% and limiting its uranium enrichment capacity. It also agreed to allow International Atomic Energy Agency inspectors access to all its nuclear facilities to monitor compliance. This was a significant concession, considering the country's earlier resistance to inspections. In return, the P5 plus 1 countries agreed to lift nuclear-related economic sanctions against Iran. These sanctions had been affecting Iran's oil exports, banking sector and overall economy, causing significant hardships for the Iranian people. The deal was seen as a win-win situation. Iran got economic relief, and the world got assurances about Iran's nuclear activities. But the deal was not without its critics. Some argued that it gave Iran too much while asking for too little. Others thought that it was not robust enough to prevent Iran from developing nuclear weapons in the long run. Despite these criticisms, the deal was signed in July 2015, marking a significant milestone in international diplomacy. The deal was done, but the world held its breath. Would Iran comply? With the deal inked, the world watched as Iran began to dismantle its nuclear program. The process was intricate, requiring a delicate balance of diplomacy, technical expertise and international cooperation. 
Iran's first steps involved reducing its stockpile of enriched uranium, a vital component for nuclear weapons. This was achieved by either diluting it or converting it into a form that could not be used for weapons. Next came the redesign of the Arak Heavy Water Reactor. This facility, capable of producing plutonium, another element used in nuclear weapons, was to be transformed in a way that it could no longer yield weapons-grade plutonium. These steps were crucial in limiting Iran's path to a nuclear bomb. Iran also agreed to limit its uranium enrichment program. By agreeing to operate fewer centrifuges, devices used to enrich uranium, Iran made a significant stride towards compliance. This restriction substantially extended the time it would take Iran to produce enough material for a nuclear weapon, providing the world with a longer buffer to respond should Iran decide to break away from the deal. At the heart of ensuring Iran's compliance was the International Atomic Energy Agency, or the IEEA. Tasked with monitoring and verifying Iran's nuclear-related commitments, the IAEA used a range of tools from on-site inspections, surveillance cameras, to tamper-proof seals. They had access to Iran's nuclear facilities, supply chains, and could request visits to any location in Iran if they suspected nuclear activities. The IEEA's reports were instrumental in assessing Iran's adherence to the deal. They provided a level of transparency that was key in maintaining trust among all parties involved. After all, this was a deal built on verification, not trust. However, even the most comprehensive compliance mechanisms could not guarantee smooth sailing. As Iran began to push back against what it perceived as the West's failure to deliver on its promises, the deal started to show signs of strain. For a while it seemed like the deal was working, but then, things took a dramatic turn. In 2018, the United States withdrew from the deal, sending shockwaves around the world. This unexpected move by the United States, the very country that had spearheaded the effort to curtail Iran's nuclear ambitions, left many in a state of disbelief. The withdrawal was followed by the reinstatement of severe economic sanctions, a move that would have far-reaching implications for Iran and the broader Middle East region. The reinstated sanctions targeted various sectors of Iran's economy, including oil, banking and shipping. The impact was immediate and profound. Iran's economy already strained due to years of isolation was pushed further into a tailspin. The country's currency, the real, plummeted, inflation soared, and unemployment rates shot up. The economic hardship faced by the Iranian people was palpable, and discontent grew. Iran's response to the U.S. withdrawal and the ensuing sanctions was a mix of defiance and negotiation. The country initially chose to remain in the deal, along with the other signatories, hoping that their commitment to the agreement would shield them from the worst effects of the sanctions. However, as the economic pressure mounted, Iran began to push back. In an act of defiance, Iran started to gradually reduce its compliance with the deal, exceeding the agreed-upon limits on uranium enrichment and stockpiling. This move was seen as an attempt to gain leverage, a bargaining chip to be used in future negotiations. But it also raised concerns about the country's nuclear ambitions and the potential for regional instability. And this brings us to the question of regional stability. Iran's nuclear ambitions have long been a source of tension in the Middle East. The country's regional rivals, especially Saudi Arabia and Israel, viewed the nuclear deal with skepticism, fearing it would embolden Iran and upset the balance of power. The U.S. withdrawal from the deal and Iran's subsequent actions have only heightened these fears. The Iran nuclear deal was supposed to be a diplomatic solution to a complex problem, a way to ensure Iran's nuclear program remained peaceful while lifting the economic burden off the Iranian people. But with the U.S. withdrawal and the reinstatement of sanctions, the deal's future became uncertain. The economic hardship in Iran, the country's reduced compliance, and the heightened regional tensions have all added to this uncertainty. So, where does this leave us? In a state of limbo, the diplomatic efforts that led to the deal are now overshadowed by economic pressure and geopolitical maneuvering. The voices calling for a return to the negotiation table are drowned out by the clamor of sanctions and threats. The Iran nuclear deal, once hailed as a landmark achievement, now hangs in the balance leaving the world in a state of uncertainty. And on that note we come to the end of our exploration of the aftermath of the U.S. withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal. The Iran nuclear deal hangs in the